Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to install Ubuntu desktop on Oracle VirtualBox. So let's get started. Head to your browser and go to virtualbox.org. Download the virtual box and here you need to select the platform. In my case, it's Windows host. So clicking on the Windows host, save it the location you want. Once it's done, we, we can open the folder and go there. But before that, we need to download the Ubuntu ISO. So let's open a new tab and go to ubuntu.com slash desktop. And from here, click download Ubuntu desktop and download the long-term edition, long-term support edition. That's currently 24.04.1 LTS. Click on LTS and the download should start. Save it, the location you prefer, save it. So once it started downloading, it will take time because it's approximately six gigabyte. Put it down. Let's first install the virtual box. Let's head to the folder and open the installer as administrator. So the setup will start and from the setup, click next, accept the license agreement, next, next, yes, yes, next, and install. Once it's complete, just click finish and it will start the virtual box manager. Now we need to create a new machine, but if, to create a new machine, we need to have the Ubuntu desktop downloaded or ISO should be there. Now. It's only saying 27 seconds. So let's head to virtual box, click on new, give a name, so I can say like MySQL DB001. The virtual machine will be stored in this folder. And here you need to give the ISO image. But since it's being downloaded, let's check if it's completed. Yeah, it's completed. Pull down this menu, go and select other and select your image of Ubuntu. Once that's done, click on skip unattended installation. Go to hardware tab and increase the base memory to whatever you find is okay with you. Because uh, right now my computer has 32 gigabyte of RAM and out of which I'm allocating 8 gigabyte to the, to the Ubuntu desktop. And I have eight core processor with 16 threads. So I will allocate four threads to it. Don't do, don't overdo this because Windows itself needs some power or some juice. Once this is done, go to hard disk. And on this location, we'll create a virtual hard disk of 25 gigabyte. I would say make it 40 or 50, whatever you think is okay for you. And click finished. Once this is finished, you'll see your machine is here, powered off. And this is the default configuration. We need to do some tweaking in this one, which is optional, obviously, but I would like to do that since I'm going to use this virtual machine as a database server, MySQL database server. So I'll go to settings, go to advanced. I will do some shared clipboard thing to bidirectional, drag and drop to also bidirectional. And in the system, I will remove the floppy as a boot order because nobody use floppy anymore. We already defined the processor, we do, so we don't need to do that. Um, next set, important setting is to the network. So we need to enable an adapter, virtual adapter, which is attached to NAT. I would like this machine 
to be directly connecting to my local network. So I'm clicking on the bridge adapter and I'm using my LAN port. So Lenovo USB Ethernet is right now I'm using as my LAN card. Once that's done, uh, you can you need to select usually the your uh, LAN port. Okay. But in my case, since I'm using dock station and uh, the LAN cable is connected to my docking station, that's why it's still no USB Ethernet. Okay. So next thing is, I would suggest this is not recommended, but I would suggest to have a shared folder created. So this folder will be shared between your Windows and or your host machine and your guest. In this case, your Windows and Ubuntu server. Yeah. So let's go here, folder path, and give it a path, which folder you would like to, to share with this machine. So in this case, that's the one I would like to share, yeah. and click OK. So once all these settings are done, click OK, and start the virtual machine. So machine is powering up and start it. So on the first screen, it's just a boot screen and it has some options like try and install Ubuntu, Ubuntu safe graphics and test memory. So we would like go to go with try and install Ubuntu. So Ubuntu, Ubuntu live CD will boot now. And then from there, it will start an installer. So installer is started and it's asking us for our language. So in this case, English, click next, some accessibility options. If you want to use them, go to next. And now you need to select the keyboard. Let's head to the one I'm using in this case, German. Click next and connection to internet is, is a wired connection as of now because we added an adapter and it considered as a wired connection. And we would like to install Ubuntu, click next, and an interactive installation, step by step, that we prefer, next. Next one is, um, how it's about the apps. Do you want to install predefined apps or pre-installed apps into the system or not? So in our case, we don't want anything because we are using it as a database server and we only need some basic utilities and browsers and something. So I would go with default selection. You can also go with extended selection based on your choice. And here it's asking about some proprietary softwares, uh, like some graphics drivers, Wi-Fi hardware, some media playing formats. In our case, it really doesn't matter because this machine is going to, going to be like a, like a database server. Click next and Wait for it. Now the next part is the disk. Which disk you would like to use and which kind of partitions you would like to do with this disk. Um, in since this is a virtual drive and it has nothing there, I can use this erase disk and install Ubuntu menu. But if you would like to do some partitioning by yourself, you have to select the manual installation and make some swap root dev partitions, home partition or home partitions to it and then you can start installing it. But in our case, it's a straightforward. We'll use a blank disk and erase it and install it. Yeah. Click next, put your name, and I would say tech rider. And the database computer name would be db001. And I would say the username as dev and password, whichever you would like to use. Yeah. Since we are not a corporate and we don't use AD, so we'll not be using AD for logging into the server. Now, next is the time zone. So right now I'm in Germany, so it's in German time zone, Berlin, Europe. 
and that's it that's all configuration you have this some kind of a review of your choices okay nothing much to watch click install and wait for many minutes uh, at least 10 to 12 minutes to complete So the installation is now completed. So click on restart now. Okay, so we are at the prompt now. We can click and log in. So once we log in, it will ask us few things like if you want to subscribe for Ubuntu Pro, no, I don't want to. I don't want to share some data, so I'll click no. Don't share system data. Click next. And it's proposing us to open App Center to download some of the productivity gaming and other apps. So I'll click finish. That's the normal Ubuntu installation. But if you want to um, use it full screen, you need to install some guest plugins. Why I'm saying this, if I, if I click here and click to full screen, it will still stay the same. And then you need to manually adjust your resolution to the one you have. So in my case, it's full HD and keep the changes. This way it will work. You can do this and you can do your day-to-day -day work. But if you would like to have it resized, Okay, so if I resize it, now I need to go and with the scroll bars and to all over the screen. Yeah. To avoid this, what we can do is we can install the guest plugins, okay, which is provided by Oracle VirtualBox. So to do that, head to devices, install guest addition CD image. So you will it will mount a compact disk or a CD drive with the tools and we click on it and open it in a window so you'll see it here you can directly click on run software to install it just run software if you want me to install it via command line just let me know down in the comment i will i will do that in the next shots or youtube short or something like that so click on run and provide your password to install and yeah that didn't work if you see here it's giving an error that bz2 not found to install these tools you need to have some packages in already installed okay it's like a prerequisite and that one is bz2 to install bz2 i'll just copy this and open a new session and do it like sudo apt install and type here bz2 and install it put your password yeah and the installation is now completed okay. then once again run the software click on provide your password and authenticate okay. so it's open a new session and it's started installation okay so you see the screen is automatically resized that means the guest additions are installed. Let's wait for it to finish. And yeah, it's finished. Press return to close this window, press enter, and that window is closed. So if you now go to view and full screen, that will be automatically full screened. If you resize it, it will match your screen size with the screen resolution needed so that's it but to make this fully compatible with the guest additions we need to install some more packages what we can do is sudo install gcc let's uh, see compiler make and pull okay. we need to install these packages 
but I forgot the apt install get thol. You need to install these packages so that the guest additions works perfectly. And that's it. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any suggestions, comments, just write them into comment section. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible.